Okay, one, two. Now, right foot, left foot. At the same time I do the right foot, the right hand strikes, left hand strikes. Step in and drill, pack up, knee, knee. And I do rotate. So I've got the hack, I go knee, knee. There's the steering hand as well. I got this from Don, as opposed to practicing it like this, just one, two. Then three, four, five, six, knee, knee. The reason you're doing the elbow, it's a 100 pound bag. It's not like in the head. So I'm not have to worry about that. Plus it's not bent over. Okay, so for that, I do the elbow and I do the knee. It's always in the position. My gun's cocked and locked. Questions? Go for it for a second. Good deal. Uh, one of the things that I want to show them, if I have the time, is uh, I'll have somebody demonstrate five swords. Okay? For a Parker technique. This is one, two, three, four, five. Okay? We uh, saw someone doing that and said that's one of the core techniques to the Parker Kempo system as far as I'm concerned. Okay? They, they have probably less than a dozen core techniques where you can reduce them down to common denominators. Okay? It doesn't mean they don't have a lot. They have a lot of stuff. I'm just talking about these. I'm not a Parker Kempo guy. I can't tell you anything about that. But I can tell you from the techniques that I've seen and from the stuff that Ed Parker has done just how really good that system is and how it can be reduced you know, to the lowest common denominators, and this would be one of them. Okay? Now, we used to practice it like this, and I want to show you how simple it is to add the leg work. I'm going to do five swords, what we call five swords, one, two. And we used to do it this way. That would be the first two, empty hands, three, four. But instead of doing this, we might poke him in the throat. Okay? But we wanted to move with it as well. So now I'm stepping in and I'm smashing. Oh, there is that stepped on foot pin. Golly. And now I'm going to hack up to here. For the next part here, I would fire the hook. That would tip him this way. And then I'd fire the hook there. I have a problem with one of my really, really ugly students. We call him Z for short because he's very tall. <laughs> okay. And it's kind of hard to throw that hook up there. And even if I got this, he's got the master build. So he has the app futon on. So it's hard for me to get the kidney. <laughs> I'm making this up as we go. Uh, but anyway, there are better ways to do that. So I'm going to do the same thing. And we'll practice for this one. We'll go one, two. Okay? And then I'm going to strike here with a ripping back fist. It's a back fist, not a hammer. Watch the pinky finger, by the way. Heel palm high because that sets him up, doesn't it? You did a chop. I'm doing a heel palm. Okay? Now I'm going to step in. If his arm's here, I don't care. I'm going to drill that hand. If his arm's not there, I'm going to drill the sternum. I'm going to drill whatever I can hit. Then I'm going to hack up into the neck. Look at my leg position. I'm in the lock of two position on him. I will then smash. He'll move it back. That's what most people will do with that. That will bend him over. Then I fire the overhand. He does the block. One, two. Ripping back this. He comes in. He strikes. He hacks up into the neck. He does the smash. And whatever position I'm in is where I have to do the block. Well, this hand didn't get there. Missed. Yeah, he's throwing a circular route. I'm making a really short move here. But the other hand being automatic is part of it. It was there for me. Now I step and hit. I come in, whack! Hack up into the neck and I'm lower than he is. Bam! Okay, now for Paulie, kick him in the groin and then blast him in the head. Okay? See what we're talking about? So, we'll show them the first